good day everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel master mariner amit song one in this video we are basically going to see about solar training manual and why do we need solar training manual so it's a requirement of solar's chapter 2 part 2 regulation 15 to have an onboard training manual all the ships are required to have this manual this is ship specific that means it's not generic and it has to be made ship specific it is kept in a conspicuous location so that all the it's uh, so that it's accessible to all the crew members normally kept in mess rooms and smoke rooms so all the crew members can read it it's uh, written in the working language of the crew and all crew members are required to read this manual and then sign this manual after reading it it's normally no, uh, seen on the ships that uh, crew members don't read this manual they just sign on the front page it should not be like that normally the third officer is given the responsibility on every ship to make sure that all the crew members read it and sign it but it is often seen that crew members just sign it they don't read it gentlemen it is for our own safety that we should read it read this manual and we should understand what is there inside it now this topic is uh, important for uh, students who are preparing for their second mates exams and also for uh, fresh seafarers who are going uh, on the ship for the first time to know and understand what the solar training manual is this manual contains uh, instructions on the use of all life saving appliances provided on the ship and is to be clearly written in a language and a style easily understood by all of the crew along with illustrations and diagrams these manuals are ship specific and are produced in cooperation with ship and shore personnel. Normally, when a ship is delivered from the yard, a manual that comes uh, from the yard itself, but then it has to be made ship specific. Sometimes they use diagrams and some illustrations which are not ship specific. You might be having different kind of personal life saving appliances on board the ship. So it has to be updated and made ship specific. Now, this does not require to be approved by the flag state but it is uh, subject to inspection by the port state uh, inspection the port state control inspectors and uh, sire inspectors sire inspections happen on tankers so it can be inspected by anybody and it has to be seen that it is ship specific it is not generic it is not borrowed from some other ship so these manuals are ship specific and are, and are produced in cooperation with ship and uh, shore personnel a training manual shall be provided in each crew mess and recreation room or in each crew cabin. So sometimes you have this uh, in some companies on some ships in each crew cabin also. The training manual may comprise of several volumes and it shall contain instructions and information easily understood terms illustrated where, wherever possible. So it can be in one volume, it can be in two volumes. Okay. And uh, it shall contain instructions and information in easily understood terms illustrated wherever possible on the life saving appliances provided on the ship and on the best methods of survival any part of such information may be provided in the form of audio visual aids in lieu of the manual okay so you can have a hard drive a pen drive or a hard disk or a cd or a dvd in which some part of it may be contained or the entire manual may be contained okay so that you have to see what is available on board your ship it contains the following information that the following is explained in detail in this manual the donning of life jackets immersion suits and anti-exposure suits as appropriate so whatever personal life saving appliances provided on board your ship it will uh, demonstrate in pictorial form in the form of images pictures photographs how you're going to don these life jackets, immersion suits, and thermal protective aids, whatever is provided on board your ship. Normally, you have uh, life jackets for every crew member on board the ship, plus 25% extra life jackets on a cargo ship, and 5% extra life jackets on a, on a passenger ship. And 10% of the total number of life jackets should be child life jackets. Now, if your ship is required, it's on a worldwide trade then you need to also also have immersion suits or if your ship is trading in a colder climates you need to have immersion suits provided for all the crew members on board the ship and for all the crew members of a rescue craft 
that's a rescue boat then it has it must have information about muster at the assigned stations that have you going to muster at the assigned muster station or the assembly station the boarding launching and clearing of the survival craft and rescue boats including where applicable use of marine evacuation systems so you normally normally find this marine evacuation systems on passenger ships you don't normally don't find them on cargo ships because these are required to evacuate a large number of uh, people in a short span of time so normally on cargo ships you'll see there are only 20 25 people so this is not required there but on passenger ships there are a large number of people on the bo on board the ship so you have to have certain equipment which evacuates large number of people in a short span of time the method of launching from within the survival craft release from the launching appliances this is basically the release of the survival crafts from the launching appliances it can be a free fall uh, boat uh, it can be a david launch life raft it can be a throw overboard life raft or it can be a gravity david type launching life boat whatever it is it gives the release the procedure for release from the launching appliances the methods and use of devices for protection in launching areas where appropriate illumination in the launching areas use of all survival equipment use of all detection equipment with the assistance of illustrations, the use of radio life saving appliances that have you're going to use your GM basis walkie talkie. If you have a fixed with VHF installation inside a survival craft, how are you going to use it? Use that. Use EPUB, use SART, use of drugs, sea anchors, use of engine and accessories, recovery of survival craft and rescue boats, including stowage and securing. So, how are you going to recover the survival craft? Normally, if you are abandoning the ship, you don't need to recover the survival craft. You just need to move away from the ship. But you may need to recover a rescue boat. Or sometimes it may happen if the ship has caught fire, you have abandoned the ship. After a while, the ship or the fire has been extinguished. And maybe you need to board the ship back. Or during drills, after the drills, you need to recover your boats. So it gives the arrangement for that. Hazards of exposure and the need for warm clothing. So what are the hazards of exposure? You may have hyperthermia, hypothermia, drowning, shark attacks, all the kinds of hazards and the need for warm clothing. The best use of survival craft facilities in order to survive. There are certain emergency equipment given in the survival crafts. So it gives you how to use them, tells you how to use them in order to help you survive. The methods of retrieval, including the use of helicopter gear, rescue gear, slings, baskets, stretchers, Breaches boy and short life saving. So it gives you methods how a rescue is going to take place with the help of, of the helicopter or other rescue crafts. Apparatus and the ship's line throwing apparatus. So basically the pyrotechnics and the line throwing apparatus on the ship and how you're going to use them. All of the functions contained in the master list and emergency instructions. So all of you are aware of the master list. It contains the duties of all the crew members on board the ship, what is to be done in case of an emergency, and emergency instructions are posted outside your cabin, in either in front of your door or behind the door. So when you're coming out of your cabin or you're going inside your cabin, you can read these emergency instructions and you are aware of all your uh, master list duties. Then the instructions for emergency repair of the life-saving appliances, there may be some damage to any life-saving appliances, then it gives you instructions how you're going to repair that. For example, if the buoyancy chamber of a life raft is damaged, how you're going to repair that puncture, all right? Then every ship fitted with a marine evacuation system shall be provided with the onboard training aids in the use of the system. That is how you're going to use that marine evacuation system. And this training manual shall be written in the working language of the ship. So normally for Indian a crew, it is English language. So it has to be written in English language. Now, this is a common question which is asked during returns and uh, during oral examination, during the competency exam. Apart from that also, it is for our own safety that we should read this manual very carefully. And we should tell our other crew members also to read this manual very carefully. If you are a third officer, then you have to make sure that the people that just don't sign this manual, they actually read this manual. Just signing this manual is not going to help. We have to actually read this manual, right? All right, uh, gentlemen, this is about uh, SOLAS training manual. If you have any questions or any doubts uh, related to the same, you can put that question in the chat box or in the comment box. I'll try my best to answer those uh, questions. All right. 
thank you thank you for watching this uh, video gentlemen i hope uh, it will be helpful to you especially for your exams and also for your understanding of this manual and uh, please don't uh, forget to subscribe this channel and uh, if you find this uh, video useful also please uh, share it with your friends okay thank you thank you for watching the video thanks a lot